Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be recreating this lovely Slytherin set. Uh, the client specifically requested a recreation of my Harry Potter set but uh, done Slytherin style. So we're going to start the video and as you can see I have already sculpted my clear base. Now I'm applying Trilogy Black Pearl to the little finger as this is the base colour that I want for the netted nail which is going to create that sort of snake skin appearance. And then I've moved over onto the thumb, which is a completely random order to do it in, but hey -ho, that's what happened. And I am using Glam and Glitz Wickedly Enchanting first, creating an ombre nail. Um, so I'm placing that quite wet on the tip, <coughs> and that's really rude. And uh, then I'm going to place a Lustre Grey by Trilogy around the cuticle area. And blend that down over the wickedly enchanting and when I've done that I am going to place another bead a smaller bead of wickedly enchanting back up over the top of the trilogy uh, my brain has just stopped working I'm so tired having a sun is really hard over that trilogy color um, just to create like a ghost in light to make sure that it looks nice and you know like you can barely tell where one color starts and the other one finishes yeah I was a bit gender discriminatory then it's not the fact that he's a boy it's the fact that he's 15 weeks old and he woke his daddy and me up every three hours last night because yeah he's 15 weeks old and he is teething yay okay so i'm coming in now with that lustre gray again this is a color block nail and for the sake of saving time um i'm only showing you me doing it on one nail but i have done it on both of the index fingers as you can see in the picture so what you want to do when you're doing a color block nail is you want to try and create the shape whatever it is triangles v shapes uh, love arts um, as close to the finished shape as possible as neat as possible with your brush to make it easier when you come to file you just want to use your file to refine so as you can see this is going to be um, a straight line at the bottom so I'm spending time now making sure that I have got a perfect well obviously it's not going to be perfect is it but as close to a straight line as possible that I can get um just working over my brush which by the way guys i have a brand new brush uh, it's cjp big boy and i ah uh, i love it love 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 i love getting a new brush yep so you can see there i've done that created quite a nice neat straight line with my brush on that index finger and i'm coming back in onto the middle finger with the same color this time and i'm creating a like a three color ombre so i started with the cuticle and then i thought now i need to change this up so I'm going now back onto the tip and this is Trilogy and it's called Outer Space and it's like, it's a blue obviously and it's got sort of flecks of um, glitter in, like they're not like little, they're not, oh god, little grains, they're more like um, shards, I don't know how to explain it, it's, it's not chunky glitter, it's not fine glitter, it's just, it's, I've not really seen anything like it, I love it. Um, and then I'm blending the darker colour down towards a lighter colour. And then I'm going to use a mid-range colour in the middle to blend the two together. And that colour is Trilogy Slate. Um, it's a bluey grey, as you can see. And I didn't, wasn't sure if it would work. That's why that sort of that clip sort of cuts out a bit. So I thought, oh no, no, it's too, it's too blue. And then I thought, you know what? <laughs> I don't have one that I want to use otherwise. And it's going to be covered by decal. And then when I put it on, actually, do you know what? Works really well. Love it to death. Okay, so now I am doing a marble nail and I am using Trilogy Green Apple or Apple Green, one of them. I'll leave the correct name in the comments because it's not in front of me right now. And one I bought specifically for this set, a new one, which is CJP Seafoam. It was the closest colour that I could find that would match 
um, the Slytherin green and I'm double dipping light to dark this time and I'm using the tip of my brush to swirl that colour around. This is a tip that I picked up from the Queen herself, Annabelle McGuinness. I just I wanted to do it differently than normal this time and then when I finish swirling I am going to come in with an olivey gold green which is actually um, called olive gold and that's my trilogy and I'm going to highlight those that you see on the video there's um, the, the dips where there's not as, the acrylic's not filled in properly so I'm going to use that olive gold to fill those in and then I'm also going to apply some slate grey this is just because one the crystals that I have have some olive gold in and that's going to bring everything together two the actual symbol for Slytherin is like on a grey background so I want to incorporate some grey into it So that's what I'm doing now. I'm using my Glitter Bells 3D brush, using a very wet, very tiny little beads, and I'm literally painting it into those gaps. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a bit lumpy because I am going to cap anyway. It's just not, you know, just to make it look like a proper marble. You'll see. And then I'm using uh, the Lustre Grey to highlight those other areas and it just you know it, when I've done that it's stunning and it all comes together beautifully I was actually really impressed with how it looked because I kind of winged it a little bit so now I am just making sure that that line of my colour block is nice and crisp and I'm going to come in with seafoam green and got two whatever bead unfortunately um, just about now my dad rings so you don't get to see me trying to fix the wet ne mess unfortunately and um, this is where I managed to record it from so I've placed it nice on there made it flush while it's setting I've actually gone onto the other index finger to begin that color block but like I said I'm only going to show you one and I'm going to file this edge nice and crisp and I'm going to come in and put some luster gray down again because we're just creating like stripes then I'm going to move over onto the little finger of the other hand. You'll see in a minute to create a marble nail on that one of opposing colours because we're doing a little bit of Slytherin and a little bit of Voldemort. So these colours are Slate and Black Pearl by Trilogy. So I did a light to dark here and I couldn't see any of the black here. I'm trying to find it. Can't find it. Keep like mushing it down to the bottom. So what I did now, <sighs> trying to blend it smooth and putting a bit of black there in that gap. Really, really, really fine part of the brush to fill it in and I'm going to do it the other way around so now I'm actually dipping from black into the grey which uh, I know crazy right I'm cray cray but uh, yeah um, it actually worked better and you can actually see it and um, yeah so a lot better which is bizarre because I would have thought it being black it would have genuinely uh, melted into that colour which I've had that problem before but no, 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 Trilogy, you are a star as always. You hold your own wherever you go. So yeah, there you go. I mean, look at it, look at it. Oh, pretty.
Okay, so this is the final part of the colour block, ending it in green. So you'll see in a minute when it's all finished that I've kept the apex in whilst I've been building. Which means that you're going to take smaller and smaller beads as you walk, to walk, work down towards the edge of the nail. I've done this because as far as I'm aware these are core powders and what I'm going to do is I'm going to file it all to shape and just there's that apex capping clear at the end, just a very thin layer to protect that, that design and the colours. So my client asked for the hands to be the same but different, so my last Harry Potter set that this is kind of based on one hand was good and one hand was evil. I had um, Gryffindor and then I had um, Voldemort and Dementors and all of that rubbish. Not rubbish, oh my god, sorry, no, sorry. It's all rubbish, I love it, but okay. Uh, and all of that stuff. Um, and on this hand, I'm, I'm doing another ombre, but it's going to be different colours. The reason for this is I am matching my, uh, my acrylic colours to decals that are going to be on the nail so like i did on the other hand when i had like nine and three quarters there was like a brick color for you know the bricks um this is going to be a voldemort decal again by queen of decals and that decal has um a lot of emerald green and gray and light green on it so what i've done is i've tried to match those colors as best i can excuse my hair putting itself in the way um following the same steps as i did before Except this time I'm going to use a ghosting layer uh, of seafoam green to try and get that blend at the bottom as smooth as possible. So the colours are seafoam green, mustard grey and wickedly enchanting as they are the same ones that I'm using on the rest of the set. So I'm coming in and doing another ombre on the thumb and again matching it to the decals, this time using Outer Space by Trilogy and um, Slate at the top again by Trilogy, following the same steps that I did on the other thumb. And I really apologise, I've just cut this bit out and I've jumped to the end of doing this nail because I blocked my own camera and you couldn't see anything but my hair, which is not what you need to see when I'm doing nails, so I've just left that bit out. So, But it's the same as I did on the other thumb, just different colours. So I just want to show you how to prepare the net for the netted nail, hashtag snakeskin. I'm measuring it against the fingers that I'm using it on to make sure I've got a big enough surface area of that net to cover the length of the nail. Just kicked the remote off the sofa, sorry. Um, and then I'm cutting it to size because I don't want to use the entire thing because that's just going to drown the nails. And then um, I place that net into clear powder to use it. Then I'm going to take a bead of clear acrylic and ideally 
you want to do this in one bead because you want to make sure that it all cures at the same time but I was in quick as I could putting another bead on because I didn't pick up a big enough bead to do one bead and you're gonna put it all over the nail get it nice and neat in the shape like you're capping basically you are capping but I've gone a bit thicker with it this time because I'm gonna be filing afterwards and you're gonna work it in like I am doing with my brush and wait for it to go matte I don't want it to be shiny, I don't want it to be wet. I want to wait for it to go quite matte. And you just see, I'm just waiting now for that to happen. You can see it's losing its shine, especially up the top. And then I've taken that net out of the acrylic, placing it around the cuticle area, and then around the tip, and I'm gonna pull and pinch around that nail so that the net sinks into the wet acrylic. And I'm going to hold it there and leave it there just a few seconds just to make sure this is like real time as well just to make sure that it's set and then once it's set and I don't know why I can't remember why I've cut this bit out sorry guys I'm really tired Um, I'm going to peel it off if you do it too soon you're going to pull some of the acrylic off so you need to leave it to set a bit more and then when you're happy with it I mean you can take it off if you don't like it you're gonna come in with the color to create the snake skin and I'm using Trilogy Olive Gold because I'm going for sort of the same colors as the snake, the snake that's in um, Harry Potter, whose name I cannot remember, I'm really sorry. I did ask my client and she said that she's got like gold, um, gold spaces in between the scales. So that's what I've gone with, like a green gold. And I'm just filling it in and I've gone really wet on the end of this so I'm going to dip it quickly into the powder and knock the excess off. Finished all the nails and it's going to be time to cap but before I cap I want to do the decals. As usual I have covered that nail in base coat and cured it for 30 seconds under the lamp and then I'm just smoothing the decal into place and then when I've smoothed it into place I'm going to be filing to make sure that I have a nice space around the edge of the decal where the acrylic underneath is exposed. Excuse me, I need to cough. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry guys, got a bit of a dry mouth. Because if I don't, when I come to cap, that acrylic is not going to be touching itself and it's just gonna peel off. Same process with the other hand. And I will be doing this with the thumbs as well, but I'm not going to show you these in the video because you only, you don't need to see it all. I do have a, a video of me just doing enc um, encapsulated decals, which I'll put a link to. If you want to click it, you can. So I'm having a bit of problems with the ink running on my decals. I haven't got the consistency of my clear acrylic right yet. I'm still learning. I'm new to this decal business. Uh, the first ones that I used were actually in the Harry Potter set, the first Harry Potter set that I did, never used them before. And because this set was so important, and because my client had come so far for them doing, I didn't want to mess them up, I didn't want to make them uh, run. I didn't have any spare ones either, that's sort of the other thing. I wasn't going to use it to practice on, so what I've done is I've gone over the top in base coat, and I'm going to cure it just over the image, and then I'm going to come and cap in clear just because I want to make sure that I haven't um, ruined the decal underneath and then I can get a bit of practicing on my own in my own time so here we go and I'm gonna cap now all of the nails except for the color block nail and the snakeskin nail because they need filing I'm gonna file them and then cap them afterwards except for the snakeskin because uh, that doesn't need capping because it's already got that strength there. Right, so once I've capped, and I'm going to cap on both hands, but I'm not going to show it in the video because I don't need to, it's the same on all the hands. Then I'm going to file, like I said, the snake skin nail and the colour block nail. And I do just put, 
even though I didn't get it on camera, a very thin layer of the colour block just to protect it underneath, just to make sure that it's got, you know, the final bit of structure. But it didn't, I did it so thin it didn't, it didn't need filing afterwards. And then I'm going to put my crystals on and I'm going to put a separate video up of me doing the crystals because it does take quite a while and it's just going to add time. Some of you already know how to do crystals, some of you don't. So I'm just going to do a separate video for that. And then when this clear has cured and I've filed and I've done the crystals, I'm going to top coat. So here is the set after I've finished filing. You can see uh, that colour block is um, one of the best I've ever done. And then here is the set after I've top coated and put the crystals on. I hope you like it. And if you want to check out my Instagram, you can see the full pictures that I'll be putting up. I hope you like the video. I hope you hit subscribe and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.